Okay, so we are back. We are now gonna be making dinner for probably a big group of people. A bolognese can feed so many people at once. We're doing a lentil, mushroom, and walnut bolognese. So it's a bit of a twist on a traditional bolognese, which obviously usually includes meat. A bolognese is usually cooked for hours and hours because you're kind of slow cooking the meat, but today we're just gonna do a quicker version, which takes about an hour in total. There is still some time involved. As we have talked about before, we're gonna like cook down the veggies so they get nice and sweet. And then we're gonna add some really beautiful aromatics into this dish. We have red chili flakes, we have black peppercorn, we're even gonna use some orange peel, some balsamic vinegar. So there's like tons of really warming, delicious flavors. Um, and we're gonna serve it with some spaghetti squash which if you haven't heard before is like this miracle vegetable that actually turns into a spaghetti like texture once it's been roasted so I use it a lot as a substitute for like classic pasta um, it's delicious with any kind of sauce it kind of just absorbs whatever you cook it with so I'm going to show you how we prepare a spaghetti squash um, it takes a little bit of strength and this is where your knife Safety is top of mind as well. Um, so you really wanna be gripping your knife pretty hard. And what I like to do is kind of go right into the middle of it first and kind of wiggle it in. And you wanna be holding it steady with your other hand. And then you're gonna kind of slowly start to break down the side and then push it through more. And this is the hard part where you have to get through the butt of it. And there we go. And then I'm gonna pull it out. I'm going to reinsert my knife and then I'm kind of just going to work my way down the other side and then you get to a point where you can kind of just push it open like that. And so now we're going to take out all of our beautiful squash seeds and of course these can be eaten so we aren't going to throw them away. We're not going to use them today but they are really delicious if you toss them with a little bit of olive oil, some maple syrup. You could do like cinnamon or nutmeg or any of those warming spices. And you would just put them on, you would remove all of this flesh and then you would roast them for like 15 to 20 minutes in a 300 degree oven. If you want to get them crispy, you would do them for even longer. So we're going to get rid of those. And using like a nice big spoon is really good for this to kind of use the edge of it as like a, almost like a knife. So you're kind of cutting the squash. I'm just gonna pop that over here. And then to roast your spaghetti squash, we are going to drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. I like to keep it pretty simple. And then we do it at like 375 to 400 degrees in the oven for about 45 minutes. Um, we're gonna season it with some sea salt, a little bit of black pepper, and then we're gonna flip them. So they actually start to cook by being in the oven, but also they start to steam a little bit because all of the steam gets trapped inside which is kind of why you wanna try and cut it as even as possible. Another cool thing you can do is stuff this full of herbs. You could put some like fresh sage or thyme and then that flavor is actually gonna be infused into the spaghetti squash as well. So we aren't actually cooking this now. I have another one in the oven. So we're just gonna set this over here while we start working on our sauce. So this sauce is gonna happen in stages. First, we're gonna start by cooking our walnuts because we want those to have enough space in the pan that they can get kind of like toasted. They can get a bit of, of color on them. We're gonna do like a medium heat and we're going to add a bit of olive oil. We're gonna let the olive oil heat up a bit before we add our nuts. We're also going to add some mushrooms in here. So while our oil heats up, I'm gonna show you guys how we clean a mushroom. So basically mushrooms can get very dirty and we don't want to wash them like we wash them like regular produce because they absorb a lot of moisture and then that's gonna affect the texture of your mushroom in the end. So what we wanna do is just take a piece of damp paper towel and kind of brush them in short little strokes to get rid of all of your dirt. And it should come off really nice and easily. These ones are surprisingly quite clean so 
I don't have to work too hard, which is great. Normally this will be like completely covered in black stuff. So ones are nice and clean. Great. Oh, I'm going to use that actually. Okay, so we're going to add our walnuts in. And we're going to let these kind of do their thing for like five minutes. Um, they're going to get really nice and toasty. You'll start to smell them. Um, but you do need to be checking on them because we don't want them to burn. Once they start to burn, they're going to get a little bit bitter. So we want to avoid that if possible. I can already kind of like hear them. They're starting to sizzle a little bit. And while those toast, we are going to chop our mushrooms. So you can do this in many ways, but the way that we're going to do them is I like to cut them this way. So we're going to do them in about, let's say four, these are pretty big mushrooms. So I'm going to do four cuts and then we're going to flip them on their side and we're kind of just doing a dice. So we're going to cut again the other way. And then much like when we cut our onion, we're going to flip it the other way again. And the beautiful thing about a bolognese sauce as well is like it's a very rustic dish. So things definitely don't need to be perfect. The veggies are traditionally cut pretty small though. So these ones up here, we did the, bruno the brunoise cut like we've done already today. And some people will even do these in a food processor and it just allows them to cook down like a lot faster and they get super, super nice and soft and they almost just like melt into the sauce. You don't want like big chunks of veggies in your bolognese sauce. Okay, so we're getting our mushrooms. Mushrooms are going to make up kind of for that umami flavor that we're going to be missing from the meat and same with the nuts. So you kind of always want to think about when you're replacing something in a dish, what are the qualities of that ingredient that you're replacing and how can you make them uh, present in other ways? So it's always something to think about with this. Perfect. Okay, so I think our walnuts are done. So we're gonna kind of add everything together. We're going to add our sofrito. So remember our sofrito is the red onion, the celery and the carrot. The ratios are generally half of the whole mix should be red onion and then the other two quarters are made up of the carrot and the celery. We're going to add this in. Get all those beautiful colors. And in goes the garlic. I'm gonna turn our heat down a little bit and I'm going to add in the rest of our olive oil. And then similar like when we were blooming spices before, it's kind of a trick that you can do in a dish like this as well. Um, if we add in our spices at this point, it's gonna give them a chance to really come alive. Uh, so I'm gonna add our black pepper. I can already smell everything happening, it's delicious. And then we're gonna add our chili flakes as well. We're gonna season with just a pinch of salt. And this is one of those dishes that really exemplifies taking time. So I've added in my pepper and my chili flakes. I'm going to add in my chopped mushrooms. And because the mushrooms are being cooked down into a sauce, it's fine that we're cooking them this way. But if we were doing them on their own, I would probably 
cook them um, with not other things happening in the pan. Because of their water content, mushrooms really will like release a lot of water and they'll almost tend to steam, which will leave you kind of with a soggy mushroom. So if you want something that has a little more like meaty texture to it, you might cook it separate or if you wanna get it crispy and you just need to make sure that it's kind of spaced out in the pan that it's not overcrowded. So we have all of our ingredients in here for the first phase of the sauce and this is really where time is important. We're gonna let this cook for about 15 minutes. We're gonna get everything like super soft, um, translucent. We're gonna to start to smell the aromas of the vegetables and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna build the rest of our sauce. Okay, so we're back. I've tidied up my station. I'm gonna show you guys a quick glimpse into what your veggies should look like at this point. They've kind of darkened in color and they've really gotten quite soft and they're gonna be nice and sweet. So we're going to move on to our next steps. Our first thing we're gonna do is add our tomato paste. We're adding three tablespoons of tomato paste. Tomato paste is such a great ingredient for so many reasons. It's basically a concentrated tomato flavor but it's not there quite yet when it's in its raw form. So we wanna cook it down even further. And what this is gonna do is it's going to um, almost like caramelize the tomato paste and it's going to add a great richness and depth to your sauce. And in a traditional bolognese, you actually don't use canned tomatoes, you only use the tomato paste and it's enough to give it like that super delicious tomatoey flavor. So we're gonna kinda let this cook down a little bit. And you'll start to see that it gets like really dark in color and that's when you know that it's done. So we'll let that go for a few minutes. Another thing that we're gonna do once that's done is we're gonna deglaze our pot with a little bit of broth. You could use wine here if you wanted, you could use just water if that's all you had, but we're going to pour this in and we do have like some little kind of browned bits sticking to the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna use this to lift up all of those bits and deglaze our pan and then we're gonna build our sauce in there. So the, all these little brown bits are gonna add just like so much extra flavor, it's gonna be delicious. And then we're gonna put in our lentils and the lentils are what make this like a really great option for vegetarians and people who eat plant-based because they're really high in protein, they're high in iron, um, they're high in B vitamins, and they're really inexpensive. So I always have lentils at home. These are red lentils, so they've actually been split in half, which means they cook really fast. Other lentils like brown lentils and green lentils are a little bit hardier. They take like 35 to 40 minutes to cook, whereas these should be done in about 15 minutes. And you kind of want to watch them because once you start to overcook them, they'll get kind of mushy, which we don't really like. We want to have a little bit of texture there. Okay, so we're gonna add in a little bit of this broth to start and we're gonna use it just to lift up all of our browned bits on the bottom of our pan. If you were using wine here, the wine actually would cook off, so you're not actually consuming alcohol by the time that everything is cooked. Um, it does also add a nice flavor to a sauce like this. Okay, we're in. We're going to add in our lentils. Oh, oh so these have, been, <laughs> these have been soaked and rinsed and then they were left so they're, they've gotten a little bit <laughs> hard because they've just been sitting in this dish for a few minutes. So we're just gonna pull those out. But these were soaked overnight, which again will decrease the phytic acid levels in your legumes, which can make them really hard to digest. So this will just make this easier to digest here. Perfect, I'm just gonna break those up a bit. Great. Okay, we're going to add the rest of our stock. So we're adding in three cups of vegetable broth. We're going to add in some balsamic vinegar for flavor, and this is gonna add a little bit of sweetness as well. And then my favorite sneaky bolognese ingredient is orange peel. I think it just adds a really nice um, flavor. People sometimes will have my bolognese and they'll be like, what is that? And it's likely the orange. Nutmeg is really nice in here as well. Sometimes I do that. So orange peel's going in. We're gonna add a little bit more salt and pepper. Not too much because you don't want to oversalt it. Once it's oversalted, it's a little bit more difficult to correct. Whereas if you just add a bit at this point and then if it needs more at the end, you can always add it. Okay, we're all good. I'm going to turn this up to 
a boil. And then once it's kind of like, once it's boiling, I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. Let this simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then we're going to check back in. We will make sure everything tastes good. And then we'll serve it with the spaghetti squash. We're back. So we have our roasted spaghetti squash. We've let it cool a little bit. One thing to note also when cooking your spaghetti squash is if you have already almost overcooked it, you want to take it off of the tray and you definitely don't want to leave it like this because it's going to continue to steam. And so depending on when you pull it out of the oven, that's just something to think about. We are going to serve up this spaghetti squash onto our plate. We're going to top it with our delicious bolognese sauce, which is done cooking. And then we're going to garnish it with some fresh basil. Uh, so I'm going to show you our little spaghetti squash trick. We are going to take our fork and we're going to run it widthwise along our spaghetti squash. And you'll see that it kind of starts to form these spaghetti like strands of squash. I do it halfway to the middle and then I turn it and do it on the other side. There's lots of cool recipes too, where you build a dish directly in the spaghetti squash. And so here we go. We have this like spaghetti like texture. Spaghetti squash is great if you're on like a low carb or a keto diet because it kind of replaces um, noodles or spaghetti. And I love spaghetti. There's absolutely nothing wrong with eating pasta. It is so delicious. But sometimes when you want something a little bit lighter, spaghetti squash is a really, really great option. So we're just going to do one of these here. I would say one large spaghetti squash is usually good for about two portions. I'm going to add it to our plate. There we go. Perfect. And then we haven't tasted our bolognese sauce yet. So we're going to do that. I'm going to check if it needs any more salt. And then once it's good to go, we'll add it to our spaghetti squash. And this really is such a great dish if you are plant-based or vegetarian, but it is also really good if you still eat meat. I eat meat and I absolutely love this dish. It is really hearty. It's really filling. You have the lentils, which are super satiating and full of like protein and iron. I'm going to taste it. Mmm. It's really good. It definitely needs a bit of salt. So I'm going to add this in. And I know the difference is just going to be amazing once I add this. I also love the walnuts have stayed kind of crunchy. They maintain their texture. So the lentils and the mushrooms really cook down, but then you still have that crunch from the walnuts. It's so good. Perfect. That should be good. And we're going to add it to our spaghetti squash. Lentils are a great meat substitute. I also use lentils to do like a vegan shepherd's pie or you can make sloppy joes. Lots of good options. We're just going to put this right on top. And then garn garnish it with our fresh, beautiful basil. You could do Parmesan as well. You could do a vegan Parmesan by chopping up some toasted almonds or cashews with nutritional yeast and salt, but we're just going to keep this one dairy free or cheese free. Beautiful. So here we have our lentil mushroom walnut bolognese, perfect for a cozy fall evening. It is packed full of protein, packed full of fiber. It's going to really fill you up and leave you feeling satiated and just happy. Um, next, we're going to be making our bone broth. 